and I'm just going to get a little bit of, I'm going to open that, I'm going to get just a little bit of flow through there so that you can see I'm getting some flow onto the wheel. I've got this cover set up so that I'm not going to get too splashed. So I'm going to point direct that down a little bit. That's better. I'm going to maybe turn the water down just a little bit. There. It's about all the water flow you need for the uh, polishing wheel. Probably similar for the diamond too. Just got to make sure you have enough so that it's not burning the glass. Now, the wheel is touching the glass, so we don't want to turn the wheel on just yet. Um, we want to pull it away. We want to pull this head away from the... So we're going to pull it away from the glass a little bit. Then I'm going to get the table turning clockwise. Make sure the table's turning clockwise. For grinding, you want to go low speed with the polishing wheel and high speed with the diamond. So we're going to go low speed. Now the wheel is turning, okay, and gradually let the wheel come to the glass. And it's grinding. Now the head should be 90 degrees. 90 degrees. You should always be grinding and polishing 90 degrees to the edge. You can see we're polishing right now. And if this is centered properly, the pressure will remain even. Otherwise, if it's not centered, the cylinder will be pushed out and pulled in a bit depending on the air pressure and the position of the glass. you get, you go around a couple of times and you get a nice smooth edge, then what you can do when you're finished, then you can pull the head off using your handle here, just pull it off a bit, turn the table off, and turn the grinding wheel to neutral so it's not spinning anymore. So it stops spinning. And then you can release the air pressure using the air toggle and it'll come back out. Now, we don't have the locking arm on there, so it's going to come all the way back out if I keep going. In which case, it would probably be a good idea to put a separate switch in to shut the air off completely or simply bring the head back in okay let, let it rest gently on the glass without it turned on and then come back here and turn the air pressure back to zero so that the arm can be pulled freely back out without it going back in. Now, I forgot to turn the water off. It's always good to turn the water off, otherwise you'll have a mess around the machine. And you can see here that we've got water going off into the shop, and that's why it's good to build a containment area around the base of the machine so that you will contain the water. It's also good to have a drain or a sump pump so that you can get rid of the water. To release the piece after I'm finished polishing, I simply pull this lever up and this will now be released. I can drain the water off and then put the piece on my rack or put it through a washer or dry it. If I want to suction back on, Again, I should try to center it on this hose. If I had the mark using my circle cutter, 
then I would leave that mark with a grease pencil on there and I would reposition this and then suction back on by pushing down. You can see when it's suctioned, sometimes you have to help a little bit there. It's just gone down. Now it's, it's not moving. Now, you got to make sure it doesn't move. And also, you have to make sure that you have enough space between the edge of the glass and the near suction cup so that it will not interfere with the wheel. So always make sure you have enough space when setting up your piece of glass. To turn the machine off, simply stop the vacuum pump and you can shut the vacuum pump off, off when you're not using suction. Otherwise you will burn up that vacuum pump sooner. So leave it off if you're not using um, putting a piece of glass onto the suction table to do your work. And then shut your main power off to the machine using your disconnect. And that's it. Okay. So if you have a large piece of glass on the table and it extends far out and you want to support the glass, then you can use this wheel here. It just bolts on to the machine here and you have to adjust it. It's adjustable on the height with this, with this Allen key. You, you have to adjust it so that it sits so that it sits flush with the glass and it's just supporting the glass and it's not pushing the glass up or letting it sag so that the glass will run in the middle of your wheel. If you don't want to work in semi-automatic mode for doing circles and you want to do ovals or special shapes or even if you want to do a circle in, in uh, manual mode, you have to make sure that you release the clamp and move it out of the way and you can put the screw back on and make sure that the head of the screw clears this so that it does not, does not hit. Okay, so you have to do that first. You can do that all by hand. I'll go a little bit further. So now this is free, and this whole arm is free. The next thing you have to do is you have to release the head. So you make sure that the head is free to swivel. And now, the third thing you have to do you have to make sure that your compressed air is off so that the cylinder is not pulling the arm in or pushing it out from the toggle switch so that it's totally free. So now your, your, your machine's totally free to work in manual mode. You can move the head anywhere you want. Now it's always best to again position whatever shape piece you are in the center and make sure all the suction cups are covered and make sure you've got clearance around your edge so that the wheel does not hit the edge of the suction cup support. You're going to turn your vacuum pump on after you put your glass in place and you roughly center it. You're going to put your vacuum pump on and then you're going to depress your suction valve. Wait a little while. You're going to depress your suction valve. The first time you turn the vacuum pump on, it'll take a little while to generate the vacuum, but you will see the piece pull down. You physically see it pull down. With the machine, with the arms totally free, um, and the head in the correct position, like the wheel center uh, for the glass you're using and the profile, once you've got it marked, once you know what position it's supposed to be in, then in order to do manual edging, all you have to do is get the table turning, and then you turn the wheel, the grinding wheel on. So you always want it turning clockwise. You turn the grinding wheel to high speed for a diamond, low speed for a polishing wheel. We have a polishing wheel on right now. So I'm going to turn it to low speed. And then you have to make sure you've got some water on. Oh, I turned the water off. One sec. I'm going to turn 
that. I'm going to turn my water on. Master water, and now I've got water coming to my wheel. And you can reposition it with this hose. You don't need too much water, you just need enough water so that you don't burn the wheel. Turn the table on and then uh, low speed. And now you always hold it 90 degrees to the edge, 90 degrees with the handle. You can grab it here and here, or you can grab it up here or down here. Can you see yeah. up here yeah. or down here? So then you just move the glass in, and as it, you bring it in until it's working, and you apply the right amount of pressure with the suction on so that you get your desired result. You can't let the wheel stop in one spot, and then you can just pull it off slightly when you're finished. And then you stop your table, stop your wheel, you can shut that off, release your vacuum, and then lift your piece off. We did not have the vacuum on for